So I'm Rianne White and I've been working as a dog photographer for 11 years. I've been photographing dogs for 14 years because that's how old my elder pug Boo is. Um, my speciality is outdoor dog photography and um, I just like to see happy dogs having a good time. That's it. We really keep it really, really simple. So the first thing that I do when I, when I talk to people about their dog's photo shoot is I say, what do they like to do? Where do, they, where do they like to go? Where are they going to feel safe and happy and have a good time? Because that's, that's the most important thing. Yeah, so location is absolutely vital in the planning. Um, so for example, if you've got a dog who is not friendly with other dogs, coming to a park with lots of dogs is absolutely the worst thing that you can do. Um, likewise, if you've got a dog that loves the beach and loves the water, um, and that's where they come alive, you'd like to go to the beach. So you always try and plan it in conjunction with what is going to be best for the dog. But then you've got other things to consider, like the kind of backdrop that, that the person would like to their pictures. Some people really want their dogs photographed in the bluebells or in the autumn, or um, they'll wait for summer because it's warmer and their dog likes to swim, whereas in the winter it's too cold. There are lots and lots of factors to consider when it um, comes to a location, but I would say it's, it's the first question on my lips, like where do they like to go? It's so important. You can get it so badly wrong as well. Um, I did a shoot once with a whippet, and the, the, the lady said, oh, she loves to go to the woods. We love going for a walk to the woods. It would be lovely. And being a whippet, she was more interested in looking for squirrels to chase. Um, I hardly saw her when she came running past a few times and it was a disaster. And in the end, I actually said, I think, you know, we need to find a different location. So we went to the beach and she was a completely different dog. Um, very engaged with us, playing, running with the ball, posing, um, very interactive. When it comes to lenses, over the years, I have um, found myself using a variety of lenses that work for me in the way that I work. And I use the uh, 14 to 24, 2.8, 35, 1.4, and the 70 to 200, 2.8, all Nikon. I generally tend to use these in the same order. Um, and I always start with the 70 to 200. And the reason why I start with that is because I like to get dogs to run around and be free, um, do what they want, um, and kind of get rid of some energy. The last thing a, a dog is going to want to do is to, they've got out the car, sometimes they've had a long drive, and be sit posing. It's boring. So we let them run around, get rid of loads of energy, and it's a fantastic action lens, it's the 70 to, 70 to 200. But the other really important reason why I use that first is that some dogs are nervous of me, so I can take pictures of them from further away I'm kind of in their vicinity, but I'm not in their face, so to speak. Whereas obviously with the wide angle, I need to be very, very close. Um, and with the 35, not so close, but still quite close. So I use the 70 to 200 first, um, get them running around. Um, I can be further away. And then if the dog is amenable to it, then I can use the other lenses for different style. Um, so the, if they're happy with me being closer to them and interacting with them, I go from the 70 to 200 to the 14 to 24 and, um, and then I play with them, I run with them, I throw the ball in the air and, and I can get something really, really different. It's very difficult because I can't see what I'm doing with that lens um, and it's generally a hit and hope type of affair but actually I find a lot of pictures that I've taken with that to be my more favoured pictures because I think oh, it looks quite unusual and I know how hard they were to get. I call the shots that I do with that interactive dog pictures because I'm working with them with whereas with the 70 to 200 I call it passive dog photography because they're doing something over there and I'm in an observational mode just sort of photographing them albeit I am kind of telling the person where to throw the ball etc. Lastly, I use my 35. I call that my beautiful portrait lens and it is absolutely stunning. But I really generally tend to use that when the dogs are tired and they're more amenable to being still. Even if it's just a second, I can, I can get a portrait of them. So that tends to be the order that I use the lenses. Um, at the end, I'll actually also use the um, wide angle for my flash work as well. But again, not all dogs allow me to do that. They don't like the flash, but I'd say 99% are completely ambivalent as long as I've got what they want 
i.e. the ball or a treat, and I'm kind of using that to get them to go where, where I'd like them to go. They, they, they don't care about the flash at all. But occasionally you'll get one that's not so keen and then therefore I don't use it. I use flash because I like the lighting effect that I get from it, and that's essentially why. Um, it gives me flexibility in terms of the direction at which I can take the picture. I don't always have to be shooting with the light. Um, I can get pictures from below the dog um, and with the wide angle lens that I use it with I think the, the results look really beautiful. Within my methodology of taking pictures of dogs I I've discovered very quickly that I felt that it was a more effective picture if you get down to the level of the dog at the very least. A lot of people that I teach on my workshops, they'll start by taking pictures from their own point of view. They'll be standing and they'll take a picture like that and you look at the picture and it just doesn't look that interesting. Whereas if you get down to the level of the dog, you're kind of into their world at their level and it, it just looks better. I think. But after that, after I kind of learned that very quickly, um, I discovered if I went to more of the extreme, sort of get even lower or get even higher, so right over the dog, if they'll let me, some don't, it can be a little bit intimidating, um, or really, really low, you can get perspectives that look a bit more, well, a bit different. Now, of course, with some dogs, it's quite difficult to get really low. With a dachshund, for example, to get lower than them is quite a challenge. Um, I like to put dogs on things like a rock or a bench or um, a fallen down log or something just to get them a little bit higher than me um, because that helps to get down to their level. And also I find with portraits that helps them be a little bit still, even if it's just for a second. Dogs will stand on something and be like, oh, why am I here? And then have a little look around and then they'll go. Um, it doesn't always work, but a lot of the times it does, so that helps me. I'm just, all I'm trying to do is to get a variety of pictures to um, display the dog's adventures and life um, as authentically as I can um, and to show where they are, contextualise them. You know, wh where were they? What, what time of year was it? Um, and yeah, just to make it as interesting and as beautiful as possible. When I'm thinking about what settings to use, I always pretty much always start with aperture and then work from there. I mean, obviously, if it's an action shot, I need to, you know, prioritise the, the shutter speed, but um, I still do like to have a nice blurred background. So, you know, just simple things, like things that you need to do, like with the 7200, to zoom out as far as I possibly can, to open up the aperture as much as I can, but also to get the subject as far away from the background as I possibly can. So I'm thinking about all of these things when, when I'm wandering around. And it's not always easy to get the dog where you want them to be. Um, the most important thing I, I think I can say to people is to use the motivation of the dog. That's, that's the key to be able to get the picture, is the motivation. And that transcends through everything, the, the location, the time you do it, the, the, the things that you bring to the shoot. You know, if the dog loves the ball and you haven't brought the ball to the shoot, that's a disaster because you haven't got that motivation. You've got to use what they want. And then generally, not all the time, but generally you can get them to do really what you want within the realms of what they're happy with. You never ever make a dog do anything that they don't want to do. It's not worth it, it's just a picture. Without a doubt, at all times, the welfare of the dog is your number one priority. Their happiness and safety. Um, I do find that sometimes people forget about that. Um, and they also forget about the motivation of dogs as well. So I see a lot of people taking, maybe, I don't know, they'll, they'll, they'll get their dog to kind of sit somewhere and they'll take 50 pictures or so of exactly the same thing. And the dog's getting bored and then and then they've taken the pictures and then they look through the camera and they're like, oh, that wasn't so good. And the dog is still sitting there with absolutely no reward for what they've just done. And it's the wrong way around. So I always say to people, the dog is your main focus. Take a couple of pictures, praise them, give them the reward, throw the ball, give them the treat, and then look at your pictures. Forget about your pictures, you know. If you didn't get them quite right, it's fine. You know, try again in a couple of minutes, but keep it short, keep it brief, keep it fun. If it's not fun for the dog, and also for you, you're not, you're not doing it right. The most important piece of advice I can give to people is patience.
So there are three things that you need to have patience with. Um, one, the dog. Obviously, the dog always comes first. You've got to have patience with the dog. Dogs are not people. You can't tell them what to do. Well, to a certain degree, you, you know, I suppose you can, if they're like well-trained, you can ask them to sit or this or that, but you can't say, go here, look there, do this, do that. You've kind of got to manipulate the situation, so you've got to have patience. And also they get distracted, you know. There are other dogs, there's the sound of a train, there's a plane, there's somebody coming past on a bike, it might be a bit too windy. There's always things that they may or may not like and kind of get distracted. And if people get frustrated with the dog for being a dog, you're not you're not doing it right so always be patient with the dog and be patient with things that you cannot control like the location like other dogs coming up to, to see you like oh there's a cloud coming and you've got to adjust your settings for the light or you've got to kind of hang around for another few minutes to wait for the sun to come back out or they just might not be feeling it um, so patience for the things that you can't control also patience with yourself it could be very frustrating in the beginning there's so many things to, to think about um, you know, obviously the dog, the location, um, how to use your camera, which settings to use, which angles to use, what's happening with the light, oh, there's a cloud coming. There's so many things that go, oh, your dog rolled in some poo. That's happened a lot of times on my shoots. Sometimes we've had to stop the shoot because it, it, it's so bad. So there's lots of things, there's always things that go wrong. And if people look at my pictures and think, oh, you know, that, that looks easy, it's not easy. I've been doing this 14 years and it's still very hard it's very very hard so don't think um, it's an easy thing to do it's not but it should be fun and it is very satisfying and if you concentrate on um, you know learning slowly and having a good time ultimately you're going to get much better pictures than if you really try hard and like, really concentrate and oh you must do this no 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 it's got to be very relaxed very chilled very enjoyable and if, the, if they, you're not feeling it one day put the camera away enjoy your walk and come back another time. I, in the beginning, I, I would go out all the time when there was good light, all the time to practice with, with dogs on the beach, you know, and um, it's a really good way to practice, actually, is just to kind of go and chat to people and, oh, can I take a picture of your dog and that kind of thing. So just have fun. That's the most important thing, have fun and um, patience.